walk down the street tiredly. You weren't up for this, this chaos. It was Valentine's Day, and everyone in the school was going crazy for their boyfriend or girlfriend. But you, no, you were single as a Pringle. And your crush, Leon Kawada, was nowhere to be seen. Once your house came into view, you smiled with a slight sigh. You couldn't wait to get into your bed and just take a long nap. But as you neared your front steps, you saw something you couldn't believe. Roses. Red romantic roses waiting to be picked up. So, you knelt down and picked up the bouquet and looked at a small tag. It wrote in sloppy writing, for never being brave enough. You lifted an eyebrow, but brought it nonetheless. You had gotten out a nice blue glass vase, filled it with water, and put the roses in. They would make a nice set of on the table. You picked the vase up and brought it to the dining room and placed it down in the center of the table. As you were about to climb upstairs to your room, you heard a knock. You let out an annoyed groan and went to the door. You sighed as you opened it and said to the unknown person, Look, you're probably at the wrong house. Uh, you looked up and chalked slightly. There stood Leon Kawada in front of your door. Oh. The height difference was very noticeable. He coughed slightly. <clears throat> I see you. He paused to swallow. I see you got my roses. His face was just a slight pink. You nodded slightly and just confirmed the enter. You both came to sit on the couch. Offered silence and fell at you. So, I heard that I heard around that you liked me. And smirked as her flesh got bigger. And something else got bigger on her pants. Who told you? You asked with anger. Your friend. Widened. Your friend. He, he said nonchalantly. Your eyes widened. That bitch. She wouldn't. Well, she would actually. <laughs> well, why you know? You stood with a blush coming onto your already red face. Leon's face lightened with a smirk as he stood and grabbed your chin. He learned he went blood in the blood. He leaned in, smirk and all. Happy Valentine's Day. Crash the lips to you. Next thing you knew, you're making out with Leon on the couch. And then the next thing you knew was he totally ditched you for another girl the next day. And he got you further, so. <laughs> so, moving on to oh. another. That was short. That was kind of cute. That was short, though. We need to get enough of the boys. No, no, we didn't. Uh, so next up is Ishimaru. Alright. You dreaded the day itself, finding it absolutely corny. There were lovey-dovey couples everywhere in the hallway. You felt like you wanted to puke at the sight. Why does Valentine's Day exist? You muttered as you opened your locker. Who made this awful holiday anyway? They had to be completely lovesick. Oh god, I didn't know who left us in this. Should I do her, or...? No, because the Akian right next. Alright. Oh god, I'm so unprepared. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Do it alive. Well, since it is obvious that we want to make single people feel terrible. Celestia so agrees with you, walking beside you toward the dining hall. The two of you walked into the room and sat beside each other. You were both annoyed to hear Mizuno and Asahina giggling helplessly while Anishima was obviously making kissy faces. Obnoxiously making kissy faces. Celestia, may I have a word? The two girls turned at the calm voice. Your eyes were wide at the sight of Byakia Togami, standing right in front of her. Yes. Celestia said, oblivious to his intentions. He heard himself from screaming at the sight of them. They have been waiting for this since you two were friends. Uh, are you... <clears throat> are you... W will you... You wind your eyes at Celestia. You haven't heard Byakia, I'm better than you told me, stutter this much. I beg your pardon. 
Let's see, said her eyes widen a bit as well, but her stoic face masked it completely. He turned slightly pink inside. You were thinking that Celestia already knew since she glanced apologetically at you. She just wanted to hear him say it, so she kept with the act. It's really the honor of becoming my Valentine. He's the most suitable here, so. He trailed off only to be interrupted by Celestia. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was me times Ishimaru. Where the heck did this Toga Celeste nonsense come from? I should fit. <laughs> also, she got me super out of character. Would it be blushy and stuttering like this? Also, I need to practice my Tagami voice. I feel I sort of lost it. You're, you're a little rusty. I would love to. Oh my god! He screwed and hugged tightly. I'm so proud of you! What? He choked his actual. He actually thought she would decline him. He wouldn't think that. I said that I would love to become your Valentine. She also would not smile. I call bullshit on the story. Oh, she smiles only when she wants you to do stuff for her. True. She smiled, standing up and waved to you. You nodded as she held his hand. He stood for a moment until he regained his senses. The two left the classroom together. Weren't you in the dining hall? Shh. It's fine, it's all recorded. You sat as you finished eating. Picking up your bag, you left the room alone, unaware that two red eyes were watching you nervously. As you trailed in the middle of a dirty hallway, at least for a moment, it was. Hi! 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 Wait! He you turned your head to see Ishimaru running towards you. He stood behind, beside you, panting. You giggled. Running in the hallway is not tolerated in this school environment, you joked. He turned red and stood up straighter. Aye. Aye. He stuttered and held out a rose in front of you. Please look up the stars like you love. Would you be my valentine? He brushed his quick word in your mind, blushing all the while. Taking the rose from his outstretched hand, you kissed his cheek. I like you too, hugging him as he froze. He returned the hug soon after and held your hand. Valentine's Day wasn't so bad after all. Pretty sure I didn't say that sounds right, but fuck it. This story was more, uh, Celestia and Togami oh, than Ishimaru and Reader. I know, Ishimaru was like a second thought. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel kind of cheated. Gee, so far we're zero for two. Not enough seven voice in the first one, and Ishi and totally, totally cheated on the second one. What's well, Mondo? Wait, where's the mono one? Well, mono one in this song, so... Yeah, it looks... And with the line spacing, I assume there's a lot of talking. So, you know, let's hope this is the winner. <clears throat> okay, so this is a two-parter, but we're just gonna do the first part, because this is like... Like a... Like, oh my god, it, I keep scrolling down. It's like 3,000 words. Jesus Christ. Someone really loves Mondo. I mean, who doesn't? Okay. True. I can't do it. Valentine's was approaching quickly, and the students from Hope Creek Academy were all getting ready to confess their crushes about their undying love, or soak over how lo lonely they were, or others. Like you, for example, to just carry on with their days, happy enough to witness the happiness and love around them. It was flat, and you were chatting some of your time away with your friend, air quote, Falco. Falco did acknowledge you as a friend, but more like someone to chat with, or who was just plain annoying at times. Okay, they it. pretty in character so far. You just did, uh, you didn't want Falco to be alone. You thought everyone needed a friend who you could tell all your secrets to, even though Coco didn't tell you secrets. But more like, you told Coco secrets. But Coco didn't mind that. I think the golly is too shy to give you any Valentine's card. But you never know. Maybe he manned up enough to give you flowers. Oh, that would be so cute. He whispered. Still loud enough to get the attention from some students around you. Oh shit, should I do Taco? Yeah. <laughs> Hush, Taco, as she put a finger over your soft lip. He can oh. hear you, plus you're giving us too much attention. 
whispered Coco, flushing slightly for embarrassment as students exchanged glances. He chuckled quietly as he put Coco's finger away from your lips. Silly, you didn't have a super hearing. He whispered through giggles. I'm right here. Sagami, so, why do you keep popping up to me stories? Because he's the best character. He's everyone to the Bondo. Replied Sagami as he tapped you on the shoulder. You do know I'd sit behind you, so I wouldn't need super hearing. He continued as he made a sound. See, I told you. Replied Coco, blushing even darker as she turned around to hide her cherry red face. Oh, uh, hi, Sagami. <laughs> you weren't supposed to hear that. How is good to listen to that lady's conversation? He said, flushing slightly from embarrassment. And it threw it into uh, glass. Now, as I was saying, replied the teacher as he continued teaching the rest of the class who wasn't laughing. Who was only just Kyo talking. Uh, I'm sorry. You replied, looking away, too embarrassed to look at anyone with your red face. Sounds good. I'm so hungry right now. Ah, oh, too bad I didn't bring anything. You can eat my clam. Lude. Said a hungry Iwata. After the embarrassing incident, it was too much time. And as usual, Iwata had forgotten to bring his food. Or it could just be that Kyo Takas was always better than him. Oh, I didn't think I'd be doing this him again. Okay. Well, that's too bad. Good thing I have some with me. We can share it if you don't mind. Replied Kyotaka as he moved his sento box from his backpack. Thanks, bro. You sure know how to make someone happy. God, they're so gay. Answered Iwata, smiling happily as he walked Kyotaka to the rooftop to share their lunch, holding hands like bros do. Once they finally arrived at the rooftop, they noticed their seat was taken by two particular girls, you and Coco. Too bad, our seats are taken. Maybe if we ask them nicely, they will move. It's not like there's anywhere else to sit on this huge rooftop. Father Kiyotaka, as Iwata was making his way down the stairs again with a flustered face. Hey, Mondo, where are you going? Asked Kiyotaka as he quickly approached Iwata. Uh, I think we need the dining, the dining hall instead. You know, so we don't have to make problems and stuff. Eloquently put. Replied Iwata awkwardly as he looked down the stairs. Uh huh? Oh, okay then. Said Kiyotaka suspiciously of what had caused Iwata's sudden change of personality. He decided not to question him. You'll be changed. What you did to in today in class was totally embarrassing. I'm sure to got me hit me now. Oh, what do I do? Coco, that's impossible. He already hated you. She doesn't know that, or she's in denial. Blind Coco, as I'm lunched on my toes. I'm oh, sorry, Coco. I told to never do it again. I said as I put my left hand on my heart. <coughs> Good. Answered Coco as she took out her sensor box. Hey, isn't that Iwata and Taka? Why are they staring at us like that? Question Coco in a hushed tone. I looked over to where Coco was looking, and just like you said, there they were. I actually think we took their seat. Maybe I should go over and ask them. I started to stand up blink steadily. Iwata sharply turned around and quickly walked down the stairs, the Taka not far behind. Odd, I mumbled, so confused as I slowly sat down again. Maybe they were here to invest their burning love for you? Questioned Coco, flushing slightly. <laughs> yeah, sure. You probably just took his feet. I mumbled slightly, chuckling at the thought of both of them confessing. Probably. Replied Coco as she proceeded to eat the rest of her bento. Sounds good. What? No way. Why did you ever. Why did you never tell me? Asked your doctor, wide eyed and taller friend. Someone might hear. Hush your water and scan the empty room for anyone. What are you planning on confessing? These are big news. 
I don't know, I need your help. What if she doesn't like me back? We'll find a water. Just punch her until she's playing yet. After they ate, Wada had led Puck into an empty classroom. Oh, David. To tell him about his problem. And that problem was, he had guessed it. His erection. I mean you. He needed advice and help on how to confess his feelings to you. And since Valentine's was soon approaching, he urgently needed help. Well, well, I'm not the best with ladies at all, but maybe you could give her lots of Valentine's cards, saying how you feel on your Valentine's Day, or you tell her you are the secret admirer. I mean, you don't need to, of course. It was just a thought. Stalker was boned as he gave a sheepish smile. That doesn't sound bad at all. I just need your writing skills. So do you think you can help me with that? Asked Awada, hoping for the answer he wanted. M me? But you can write yourself. That's what it would be like I'm confessing. He said as he wailed his hands in front of him in protest. protest. Please, this is all I ever wanted. Please just help me this one time and I promise to bring my own food to the rest of the school year. Man, that's a shitty promise, like... Give me a handy J or something. I mean, seriously, Wada, they're already gay, so why not just go the extra mile? Wada impatiently pleaded and his small foot traps started forming on his forehead. Uh, okay, but I'm not doing the talking for you, Steve Taka offered as he looked around the empty classroom that was filled with lights from the big windows. Thank you so, so much. I promise to do the talking. Don't worry. Wada thanked and he smiled brightly. Okay, so we're we gonna get down to business or what? Asked the water impatiently. Damn beauty change. Thanks, it's the next day. <laughs> I told you I had a secret admirer. I'm sure they're thinking about you right now. Please, Coco, as we made our way down the hall to our next class. Shh, someone could hear. This is not even Valentine's Day. You're probably trying to prank me. I said as I thought about who my class would want to prank me, because probably Coco herself. Eh, handwriting is a match, though. Hmm. What do you think it is, Coco? I asked as I sat down on my usual seat beside the window. I d d don't know. Well, judging by the handwriting and the, the way they write, they seem to pay attention in, in class, not like you. Mumbled Coco as she sat down beside me. Besides me. Oh, really? Well, let's take a listen. Here's the even Myra. Let's analyze. Annalise. That's, that's the new way of spelling it. <laughs> and we're in all our classes. I exclaimed happily for once to come for the good idea. I just hope Toko likes it too. Uh, that will that will just take time. Well, okay then. But do you owe me one? He continued as I nodded happily before the speaker entered. Uh, yeah. So it's definitely not Uwada or Kuwada. Oh, no sexy seven boy. Damn, man. Can't even read this story. Taco says she crossed the names from the list of classmates. Names we made a while ago. Are you gonna eat that? I asked him patiently as I looked at where Coco's half-eaten bento. Uh, no I'm not, but please do concentrate. She said she gritted her teeth, pushing the bento towards me. Uh, okay, BGW, you say. I said as I ate the roof. Okay, back to what I was, was saying. Coco continued as a small wind blew by, strong enough to blow her skirt up. Also, the left away from her shaking hand. Oh, the list! I exclaimed as I ran after the list who flew straight in the water's face. I split his left with it. Oh, this is so embarrassing. I hope he doesn't read it. The water's bored of you. I was walking up the stairs to hopefully get the seats on the rooftop. Hopefully, Fukawa and you aren't there. As I'm approaching the entrance, a piece of paper flies by and hits my face. What the hell? I exclaim, annoyed that I removed a piece of trash from my face. As soon as I do, I see a... I meet a pair of big eyes. 
I feel my face heat up to the sight of her. Oh, I probably look stupid as shit. I feel like regaining my strength inside to talk to her. Hey, is this yours? Next time, try to keep it away from me. I exclaimed. Oh, I'm probably being too harsh on her. Wait, what is this? Is that my name written on the paper? A list of names? Why though, and why is my name crossed? Oh no, he's gonna get the wrong idea. Unnecessary drama. I'm, I'm really sorry. She said she looked down at her feet. It's okay. BCW, what the hell is this even? I questioned as I shook the paper in front of her. Uh, that is mine, and it's still a secret, and so it will remain. She responded she quickly took the piece of paper from my hands. With our hand touch, I felt my face heat up even more. Oh well, bye bye sister. She started blushing as she motioned me to go away. Oh whatever. I mumbled as I walked away to leave them alone. Oh, I should have done the seventh voice for him because he actually talks. How were we to know? Live and learn I guess.